Welcome to iLecture Online and here's combination number three for lens combinations. In this case we are going to combine a converging lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters and a diverging lens with a focal length of minus 30 centimeters. Remember converging lenses are positive lenses, diverging lenses are negative lenses. Now when you put a converging and diverging lens together they kind of counteract with each other because a converging lens causes the rays to converge and diverging lens causes the rays to diverge and as a combination will they act like a converging lens or a diverging lens and that depends upon their relative strengths. The smaller the focal length the stronger the lens is the more, uh, the more it will cause the rays to bend. So in this particular case it looks like the converging lens is stronger than the diverging lens and so the end result is as a combination the two lenses will still act like a converging lens but the second lens, diverging lens, will kind of dilute in a way the strength of the first lens which means that they will not, the rays will not converge as quickly and the image will probably be formed farther away. So let's see if we're correct on that one. If we only consider the first lens let's find then the first image and we do that by drawing a uh, array parallel to the normal till we hit the lens and then the ray will diverge and go through the focal point on the other side and so that would be ray number one. Then we draw a second ray which is from the object to the focal length focal point on the first on the front side of the lens and so until we hit the lens then the ray will diverge and continue on straight parallel to the normal that would be ray number two there's the observer looking at those rays and says sure enough they come together and so it looks like there's going to be an image formed right here and that will then be considered image one and the distance from the first lens of the image will then be considered the image distance using our equation to quickly find out where that is we can say that s1 prime is equal to s1 f1 remember s is the object distance f1 is the focal length of the first lens s1 prime is the distance of the first image divided by s1 plus f1 Ooh, not plus it's actually minus just like the equation says over there it's minus plug it in the numbers s1 we got 40 centimeters f1 was a 20 centimeter lens divided by 40 minus 20 so this is 800 divided by 20 which is 40 centimeters it's a positive 40 centimeters positive means it's a real image 40 centimeters means it's 40 centimeters past the second lens and so we can then say that this distance right here which is the s1 prime is equal to a positive 40 centimeters okay now to find the image of the second lens so in a way what you can think about is since these rays are diver is converging right here now they pass through a diverging lens the rays will then be diverged to some extent but not completely to the point where they're on, that it'll be parallel to the normal they'll continue to converge but much more slowly and the image will be formed farther away so let's see if that is indeed true uh, before we do that though I like to calculate maybe the magnification of the first lens and so first of all this is a real image and the magnification m1 is equal to minus s1 prime over s1 which is a minus 40 divided by 40 which is a minus 1 and so what that says is that the image is inverted but the size is exactly the same as the object that caused it so the size of the image is the same as the size of the object at least for object 1 and image 1 all right now doing the same thing with the second equation we can say that s2 prime is equal to s2 f2 divided by s2 minus f2 and so s2 is oh we don't know yet where is s2 well it turns out that image 1 now becomes object 2 and so the distance from the object to the lens would now be this distance right here and that distance is called s2 and notice that this is 40 centimeters the distance between the lenses is 10 centimeters so s2 is 30 centimeters however since the object is behind the lens that becomes a negative object distance so negative 30 centimeters is the correct object distance for lens 2 so s2 now becomes a minus 30 we subtract from that oh not subtract we're multiplying the numerator so we multiply minus 30 because that is the focal length of the second lens divided by a minus 30 minus a minus 30 now here's an interesting situation hmm let's see here this is a positive 900 divided by a minus 30 plus 30 which is 
zero. Wow. What does that mean? We have a zero denominator. That means the object or the image of the second lens is at infinity. That means that the, let's see here, oh, that makes a lot of sense because it turns out that the first image, which now became the second object, is exactly located at the focal point of the second lens, and it's a diverging lens, which means that, yes, indeed, the rays will be diverged in such a way that they will never come together, just continue on forever, and never form an image anywhere. So that means that the second image is at infinity, and we're not going to find it that way. All right. I guess I'll have to show you another example where that's not the case, and that way we can see how the second image forms. All right, so come back for the next video, and you'll see how we do another lens combination where we don't have an image at infinity.